500 cc's or over. Zap. Zap. At the weekly chapter meeting, the secretary reads the rules to the club's hardcore membership. There are a million motorbike owners in Britain. 2,000 of them are pretty regular hell raisers, but of these, only 32 boast the right to call themselves the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club England, established 1969 by transatlantic decree. The club's toughest fighter, Vice President John Cork, first appeared in court aged 12, five convictions since. Nickname, Mad John. Buttons and his few of the others thought I was a nutcase, so they named me Mad John after a record. And I've kept me face the same way as it is for a long time. Carl, jailed once, remanded twice, cross-eyed ever since his eyes were knocked out of their sockets in a fight. Official Sergeant at Arms. I enjoy a good scrap, quite frankly. But then again, like, I've been to psychos and they reckon I'm a psychopath anyway, so they make the odds to me. Club activities are often the only events worth recording in the otherwise vacant life of a Hells Angel. <coughs> Today, like tomorrow, will be a rather more typical day in the life of Mad John as he pulls on his unchanging uniform, the sleeveless denim jacket with Hells Angels England emblazoned on it. To drift through the grind of missed appointments, late arrivals, family bickering, non-events and generally hanging around. About midday, John's best friend, Nick, wanders in on day release from the mental hospital. Andy offers John a lift up to Golders Green on his newly completed chopper. John's got no transport of his own because Bob the Prospect, an apprentice angel, has taken the chapter's van. They reach their destination at about 2.30. One of the full patch members, Pappy, works in these flats as a porter and gets free accommodation as part of the job. Unfortunately, he's just been given notice to quit within two weeks of finding the job and the flat. Pappy wanders in. Money, or rather the lack of it, is the curse of the angels. They're always short of it. Sometimes they resort to stealing bikes. A new 500 pound machine will fetch 90 pounds in scrap and spares. But there's never enough money to cover petrol for the van, spare parts, marijuana and LSD, grass and acid. Angel Mad John sets off for Edgware in the chapter's disintegrating van. Bob, the driver, hasn't slept for four days. He's high on pep pills. At 4.30, they arrive at the council estate where John has a garage. It goes with the home where his wife, Linda, lives with their four children. Linda and John have been married seven years. Four days ago, John left home and now she's divorcing him. Yeah, more and more John started going out with these different girls that were hanging around with the group. And at first I took it as part of it, as much as it hurt, you know, but he's left several times, but he's came back after a week. Mm -hmm. And this time I thought that was probably it. Today, John needs to look in to pick up a few belongings and see if there's any mail or telephone message for him. One phone, please. I've just asked you a question. Let me get some stuff. Yeah, but you get it and clear off. And take your friends to it, please. You'll find it bloody difficult to get in in future. Yeah? You just try it. I don't want to money. You can come in and out when you like. And piss off. Happy families. John pays his wife no attention. He's engrossed in a letter just received from the Hells Angels chapter in California. I'm the new California secretary, yeah. Santa Rosa Caliph. It's the new California chapter. Oh. All amalgamated into so one. Oh. You don't need anything. Three million dollars! <laughs> okay. The only member of the family John has any time for is the half-crazed Alsatian, which he calls Hitler. Hey, hey, come here. 
Throughout his brief visit, he says not a word to his children. Excellent. Other bikers <laughs> may grow old, marry, settle down, but among the Hells Angels, 50% of the full patch members, like John, have put the club first and left behind them their council houses, wives and children. Well, I don't think, you know, they look on him as a father so much because, as I say, he's never here. He's out every night. And some, well, it's very rare that he does stay in. But when he does, you know, he seems to be a bit ratty at them. You know, why aren't they in bed and that? And so therefore, he, he doesn't have any time with his children. So naturally, he doesn't appreciate them. Back in his new flat, John makes himself at home, unpacking the bits and pieces that really matter to him. His most treasured possessions salvaged from the ruins of his former domestic existence. His trophies and insignia, his travelling library, biographies of the angel's superhero. And a banner with a strange, ever provocative device. John's scrapbook littered with the mementos of the home chapter and the founding chapter over the water. John's whole life revolves exclusively around the paraphernalia and the fact of being an angel. Neither his world nor his imagination nor his vocabulary extend beyond the cult and its jargon. Grebos and honkies, prospects and patches, mommers and old ladies. Another one for the scrapbook. The angels pose with the trophies of their continuing war. Because despite their defiant claim to be the only true chapter in England, the 32 fight a running battle with the 2,000 odd other so-called bikers from all over the country who deny their exclusive right to the title of Hell's Angels. We're chartered from the States, from the American Angels, and we've got a certain reputation to live up to, obviously. What do you do when you see a man who's wearing a Hells Angels patch? I mean, quite frankly, I'll rip it off his back. But I think the hardest one I took was off a big Negro. Because like, I had a job pulling him off the bike. I, you know, I had to really strain myself a little while. Like, if someone does one of our guys, like he starts looking over his shoulder from the minute he does them. Because if I get hold of him, I'll do him. Or if any of the other club gets hold of him, you know, we'll do him. Uncompromising and relentless recklessness is what earns an angel his place in the club. Not all are full members. At any one time, there'll be between six and a dozen prospects. Until they win full patch membership, they must do what they're told to by any full Hell's Angel. In public schools, they call it fagging, but Bob is a prospect. In a full term, you're a prospective member of the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club, which means that uh, you might one day be good enough to become a full patch member. Out of, out of all the chapters in Britain, I think we've got the hardest prospect ship because we really slag our prospects down. Uh, yeah, we whip them and uh, we make them charge around on top of vans and stuff like that, you know? Jumping fires and <laughs> basic things like that. To test out what you're going to be like in a scrap? To see if you've got the bottle to take on a guy bigger than yourself? But the thing is, once that guy gets his full patch, if he's going to do that for me, I know that that guy's going to stand behind me every inch of the way, you know? Well, we hear the best. What else is there? There's prestige. This is the nearest thing the angels have to a formal initiation rite. He goes on a six months trial after he gets his patch. And if he's still in the same frame of mind after the six months, he goes for his tattoo. Then he's in until he walks out in a box. He's all right. <laughs> Let your arms go down by your side. Just better than that's here, it. Oh, it's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Just, just let yourself go down there. And relax. You were your uncle, John. Fendi. Mm. Affects us all in different ways. Mm. When they see me, I cry. Other clubs have even more outlandish ceremonies. But they do all this thing they read in books where they piss on denims and spew and pour garbage over their patches. And we respect our patches, we live by our patches. You ain't gonna puke all over them because you're puking on yourself. A really righteous angel will consume almost anything in any quantity, combination or sequence. 
Apparently, some of the angels who arrived at this party were already high on LSD. On top of that, they'll take alcohol, marijuana and amphetamines as much as they can get, as often as they can get it. Few of the angels went to bed at all on the night of this party, and 24 hours later, five at least still seemed hopelessly under the influence. You have to be long-suffering to be an angel's moll. In a cheap two-room flat over a fish and chip shop in Islington, Graham's old lady shares the bedroom with a half-assembled chopper. Graham and Carl are working against time. They'll spend the rest of the night trying to get the machine ready in time for the climax of the angel calendar, the first bank holiday run of the year. As morning breaks, Graham is still working. Outside, the flat are making their last-minute adjustments. So I had to do a bodge with a peanut butter lid <laughs> to screw it in, like to quieten it down a little bit. Do you think it's going to last to Aylesbury? I hope so, otherwise they're not going to be some annoyed policemen. <laughs> it's going to make a hell of a row. Mick has to catch his mum to pick up the telly to make the weekend complete. Yes, you can take it. It is your telly, you can have it. Okay, I don't mind. Well, what do you think of your uh, son being a hell's angel? Well, so long as he behaves himself, I don't mind. If he doesn't get into trouble, I don't mind what he does. Surely being a hell's angel by definition means getting into I trouble. I know, I know. That's the general opinion. But there's good and bad. And I think that he's one of the reasonably good. I mean, I'm not saying he's an angel, but I don't say he's the other way either. <laughs> and I hope he doesn't do anything to disgrace himself or his family or his friends. <laughs> As individuals, the angels are a volatile mix of aggression and instability. When two or three are gathered together, the combination is explosive. When three or more foregather, a Hell's Angel pack can be described as a riot in pursuit of an incident to set it off. Midday Saturday, Bank Holiday Saturday. Only an hour late, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, England, full patch members and prospects, women friends and camp followers, is ready for the off. Mad John, Sad Happy, Uncle Nick, Little Blue, Wild Child, Graham and Andy and Mick, no angel could imagine missing a run. The pack hits the road. At garages, nervous attendants serve them quickly and hope they'll leave quietly. Mild-mannered dormitory town traffic moves over to let them through. Cars pile up behind them in peaceful shopping centres. Straits are jeered at. Yet as Hells Angels England ride out of town on their 600cc motorcycles, from a distance it's almost possible to concede them a sort of ragged glory. This is, after all, the only glory the chapter will know. A moment of glamour snatched from lives hollow with monotony. Close up, the illusion of glamour fades. Hello, Peppy! Hello, Let's go!
They take a defiant pride in taking foolhardy risks. All except one have had their licenses suspended and most boast openly of riding while banned. Mad John has even been banned from Brown's Hatch. From this point on, the weekend goes from bad to worse. Just outside Berkhamstead, the pack slows down. When the Angels set out, they'd been heading for Aylesbury. Now there's to be a change of plan. Two prospects are sent ahead to investigate something Mad John had spotted from the road. And what they find brings the whole chapter down after them. Due for renovation, please do not temper. <laughs> oh, is your written on it? Yeah. <laughs> the Katrina looks abandoned, and that's good enough for the angels. This is where they'll spend the weekend. While the angels continue with their improvements, a party rides into town to fetch food. But while they're gone, there's an incident at the canal. Just downriver from the Katrina is a sewage farm. While looking for firewood, two angels have broken into the keeper's cottage and two police patrol cars have come to investigate. Up on the hill, some angels are spoiling for a fight. Just line all the bikes up the other side of the bridge and wait for them. As they come down, we'll just go right at them. Two miles away, the food party has met with a hostile reception from the proprietors of the cherry tree. What's that with that? Just go and do it somewhere else, that's all. How about? Go and do it somewhere else. We work very hard to build that business. Yeah. We got a nice restaurant, not, not to sell teas and coffees to health no. angels, all right? Do you speak English? No, yes. Yes. no righteous angel will let himself be fronted. They want to wreck the cafe and they go back for reinforcements. As they get back to the canal, the police return. But both sides are determined to play it cool. I was sorry about this. Okay, would there okay. be no obstruction or anything? Right. No, I'll be back in a minute. I shall want some details of um, whoever's in charge because my governor's going to go. Okay? Okay, Doug, yeah, sure. Right, uh, so, as. Can you get far? John. You don't need to, you've got a train already around it, man. Listen, they said they're going to give us no hustle. Do they want to know all the details about us? But they just want to know who's in charge and where it's at. The police are ignoring the sewage farm break-in, leaving the Katrina to her fate. But their handling of the situation has just averted a minor riot. Right. Did anybody get related what we're doing tonight? No. No. We're going to smash a cafe up. Oh, good. Think we're getting our food. No, they wouldn't let us in. We're going to let you in. Well, they said we could, have a, we could go in and have a meal. We got in, sat down, right? Start to order, and this grotty little guy came out and says, I'm "Not serving <laughs> like you in here." But nobody listens to Pappy. The cherry tree remains standing. The angels have been told they'll be left alone. Their aggression has nowhere to turn except in on themselves. Now, who's going to be the first prospect in the river? Amen! <laughs> when the weather is fine, when you know it's a sign for messing about on the river. If you take my advice, there's nothing so nice as messing about on the river. There are long boats and short boats and all sorts of craft And cruisers and keel boats and some with no draft So take off your coat and hop in a boat Go messing about on the river <laughs> Put all the beer in the front in the cupboard 
Away from it all, the Hells Angels set the scene for a weekend in the country. Fresh air, clean living, the simple pleasures of life, and a few necessities. Dr. Ozo! of yours works. We'll have a weapon that we can use against all the Daleks. We can give the lot of them brainstorms. No, I'm afraid not, Colonel. The effect will only be temporary. Well, how long will it last, then? Well, if we're lucky, long enough to get away. If it works. Night falls, and with it, the rain. But by the early hours of the morning, some angels are past caring. And we went in a few pubs and they wouldn't serve us, so we got some guys in there to buy the beer. And he drunk and drunk and drunk. As dawn broke, half the bikes parked by the canal had gone. Mad John, Uncle Nick, Pappy and Bob had left. And with them went most of the drugs and a good deal of beer. A handful of damp, cold, fuddled angels were left in a waterlogged cabin cruiser, waiting for the rain to lift long enough for them to get home. The weekend was a washout. The run had been a disaster. We want a United Hells Angel Club in England. But like it can be done, we've seen it done. They've done it in the States, it can be done here. How did they do it in the States? They worked hard, like they didn't build their club in five years. It took them over 26 years to build the clubs over there. And they, they, they own like their own streets over there, they've got their own land, they've got their own farms. It's just by hard work and persistence, basically, they got it. Well, there was an article in Rolling Stone, wasn't there, which said that they did it by pushing drugs. How are you going to do it? No comment. Well, I've got a tattoo on my chest that says Hells Angels London, England, London, or London, England. I've got a tattoo on my back that says Hells Angels, and that lasts for life. So, you take it from there. Hitler himself was out for one supreme race, and we were out for one supreme angel group. In Germany, Sweden, New Zealand and Australia, even in tidy Switzerland, clubs like this one are planning to seek charters from the original club in California. At home, too, the Angels plan to expand. Soon they'll be merging with the only clubs they respect, the West Coasters, the Cotswolds, the Road Rats and the Windsors. Eventually, with every righteous motorcycle club in Britain. It's a nightmare that will probably never come true. Don't 